what's going on guys welcome back to clash with eric today is the return of the solo master series we have nick going against bernal nick from space station gaming before that he played in tribe gaming he's a a nasa rocket scientist if you didn't know which is pretty crazy but he's going against a pro intz former player now playing for NGT Legends, it's Bernal, known for his epic mustache. <laughs> but he'll see if we can uh, take him down right here in the Soul Master series where they are encouraged to do fancy, elaborate, creative attacks here to try to get bonus prizes here and bonus money as they play for this $2,500 prize pool. Now, every win that they take in this series will give them $100. They'll get a bonus 50 for getting the most creative attack of the war, but we'll see if they can get it done here. This one's starting off quite simple. Just a little bit of lightning in the middle of base there. RC comes to the top corner. The heroes charge to town hall. And wait, what did he use to destroy the CC? They use skeleton spells? I guess he used skeleton spells. Maybe... I didn't see them when they entered the attack there. <laughs> but he looks like he uh, zapped out. Wait. What? What did he do in the middle of the base here? We gotta watch that back at the start. I think I missed something. Something fancy happened at the start of this attack here that he used to destroy the CC and both scatter shots in the middle of the base. Did he do a fancy skelly donut? And I just completely missed it? <laughs> we gotta look it back. We gotta look it back. I think he got both of the scatter shots and the CC at the start of the attack here. And he's looking really, really good here. Was it a triple skelly donut to open it up? If that's the case, then he's already opened up here with crazy fancy attacks here. And he's still looking good. He's got a lot of force going to these uh, last few defenses here. Tons of balloons left. Gets the air defense down. And with only... Oh, wait, wait. This arch tower could be a problem. Watch how many blues can he take down there before he engages the Arctic Tower? I think he's got enough. I think he can overwhelm it. But this uh, Wizard Tower softening up all these blues. They're all very low health. The Warden's at low health. The Owl is still at full health. If the Warden goes down. Owl gets targeted. Here comes the minions of Puffs. They're all going to overwhelm it. He's got the triple on the board here, guys. Nick from Space Station Gaming. OP. <laughs> and I was too busy talking through my intro there to really concentrate on what he started out there. So we'll quickly rewatch that and see what he did. Three skeleton spells. Two, wait, three skeleton spells, a quake, and three invisibility? Huh? No wonder I didn't think about it much. <laughs> he has like three skeleton spells. Raged him up though. <laughs> Hold on, let me grab a screenshot of that. That might be the thumbnail right there. That might be the thumbnail. If it is, there's tons more to come here. So don't worry, because these guys are just getting warmed up. Let's go. <laughs> that was wild. Let's dive in to Bernal. Bernal coming in with six skeleton spells. He's doing similar to how they do the Inferno Dragon attacks. He'll use a Sneaky Goblin to funnel the king to go north on the base here, follow him with the queen, and maybe get the, the king to go inside of that compartment. He will. Look at that. The king will lap in there. And go get out this scatter shot here while the queen will continue along towards the top end of the base here. He can use skeleton spells to protect her if he needs to. He drops an ice golem initially while the king is uh, going to get distracted here by the enemy queen. He uses a freeze there to protect him and preserve his health so he has enough to get through that queen and still get the scatter shot and explode down. Very, very nice here. The queen... Has her ice golem freeze up the enemy RC and will continue all the way into that compartment there and work her way in a little bit there with her unicorn. She won't survive forever in there, but she will form a nice funnel here for the dragons. Rages up the dragons, uses a blimp to travel through and push all the way across the town hall. Now watch out for traps here. Watch out for a tornado trap and black mines as this blimp travels through. Hits one black mine. There's another one. There's a rage. No tornado. Reaches the town hall safely. That's one of the biggest risks here of these dragon attacks here. That Oh, there's a tornado trap on the opposite side of it. So that tornado trap is always trying to judge where the attacker is going to send in the blimp from. The primary function of the tornado trap at town hall 14 is to catch the blimp. And try to stop it from sniping the town hall. Because that is the most common way that people are dealing with the heavy, heavy 
damage output of the town hall and it can really cause a lot of problems for the attacks but tons and tons of skeleton spells are coming down for the royal champion to move her from that top corner and cross the base here Virtually none of them came in for the dragons. They're all used for this RC to drive her through there. Also, all the top ones are going straight into cleanup. He'll have the RC still with her ability. As she gets to the back side of the base, she'll use her ability to take out all the remainder defenses if she wants to. Or he can just swagger at this point. The dragons are done, but the skeletons going to cleanup are going to finish off the rest of the base here with the help of the RC and the warden being our only air unit standing other than minions. Nice attack here from Bernal. I don't know that it beats out that Skelly Donut Lalo, though. But maybe they'll have to keep stepping up here. I mean, it'll be the viewer's decision who ultimately wins the most creative attack there. But Dragons with Skeletal Spells seems a slightly off meta, but pretty close to that Inferno Dragon attack that we see. Nick is live. Here we go. Nick coming in with five, no, four bat spells in a Lalo attack. And he's got sneaky goblins to go after the town hall. He has a jump to initially open up access to it. He sends in one sneaky goblin to go trigger traps. Now he sends in the rest of them. He can make them invisible and he can get the town hall down through the jump spell. And that is how he's going to start it off here. Nice setup. I like it. Also triggers a bunch of traps there. Gets a bunch of the grass skillers out of the way. And he'll uh, lure those across the base here to his hero, starting on the complete opposite side of the base. He's got a golem coming down with the heroes here, and he's going to use the wall wreck, no, log launcher, log launcher to open up access with the king and the golem tanking up ahead. And we'll see where he wants to send the royal champion to come in and support. But if I had to decide, it would be. Oh, look at this. The warden on ground. He can put the warden on ground here and provide the extra support to the heroes because he already dealt with the town hall so he can use an early ward ability here with the combined king ability to make all of his uh, barbarians invincible to get a lot more value out of them the rc swings along the left side there she's not going to make it through that scatter shot but that's okay let's make it a decent push away into the core of the base he's got the golem that uh, ended up leaving the outside but a triple ice golem comes out for the queen and that'll keep the queen protected as she goes and continues further into the base. Here comes the Lalo, gonna wrap around the heroes here. If he can get the warden to transfer off of the queen and onto the Lalo, that'd be some big value to her. She steps through the wall and she takes the scatter shot. <laughs> Let's go, Nick. Let's go. He still has four bat spells for the backside of the attack. Don't lose track of those bat spells, guys. He's got some ice golems. They're gonna cross through. They survived up until this point. He'll freeze up. The air defense as he rounds the corner there, also catching the wizard tower. And here comes the bat spells onto the scatter shot up in the top corner. He's got the ice golem still tanking in the middle, keeping some of those high firing defenses off of him. And he can wrap out, clear that top compartment. There's, he get, I guess he could freeze there. He doesn't really need to though. Look at all the balloons. <laughs> Crazy. Guys, he's got swag spells. He's got swag spells. He doesn't need them. Brilliant attack here from Nick. Absolutely love it. It was a jump invisibility to snipe the town hall. Then a Sui hero with a log launcher with a ground grand warden and then a Lala with bats in it. Like that was like three levels of creativity stacked on top of each other into a masterpiece. Love it. Brilliant stuff there. Look at that. Look how happy he is. He's always that happy. I've met Nick a few times in person. He's always that happy. Every single time. He just always has a smile on his face. Just like, he's like, whatever, I'm a rocket scientist. What else? And then Bernal's got his awesome mustache. I mean, you know? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Bernal. Coming at, we keep seeing these anti two star bases like this. I swear we just saw one almost identical to this. I mean,. They shuffle around the core of the base a bit to try to find a way to do this without giving up too much lightning value. And even when they do give the lightning value, a lot of times I feel like people just go in there and they get too fancy trying to figure out how to get it all the way to the core because these bases are so big that uh, they end up wasting so much time, they end up time filling. But he'll charge a queen in here and get ready for a Lalo. Bernal has always been known for his mastery of the queen charge and a Town Hall 14 you know that's a brilliant skill to have with the power of the heroes and just definitely is uh sets him apart as a 
player compared to a lot of the other pros, but we'll see what he can do here as he continues to turn his way through. He's got a nice funnel here for the queen to go all the way to the core of the base here. He hasn't wasted much time in the process as well, so he's uh, just reaching that two minute mark as he wall breaks into the core, takes out the enemy RC, king surges along, along the top side, and that will drive the RC to go right in between the king and the queen to go in here and clear the left side of that core compartment. Right side of it, I mean. I swear on my directions. But he will go into the core, I think. Oh, we, oh wait! Ah, no! No! He popped the invisibility to try to force the queen inward, but she didn't go in. Not only that, but it pushed his queen forward and made so that her healers are getting targeted. Oh, no! Come on, queen. Hang in there. Hang in there. Here comes the Lalo. He has the blimp. He can still snipe the town hall with the blimp. But he needs to keep the queen alive for a little bit longer. Get this multi-inferno down. If she doesn't get the multi, he'll be ending on it. And it's going to be a big, big problem here. Blimp will travel through. Hits the tornado trap. Come on, man. Come on, Bruno. Hold it together here. I don't think he can triple anymore. But he'll collapse in the left corner. Loses all the balloons in the middle. The multi-infernals will stay stand. Standing. Oh, man. That queen, that invisibility spell came down just like, just a hair too late. Just a hair too late. And it could have forced the queen to stay inside of the wall break and go to the core. But it pushed her out. She got, she got targeted by the inferno with her healers and she surged forward into too much damage. Too much there, too much there. Double grand on the other side of the base there didn't really help. That just added to the hurt there, but maybe he could have kept it alive there. And he could have got the queen to take the town hall with her ability instead of wasting over on the left. Man, that's rough. These anti-two-star bases, I mean, there's a there's a couple good ones out there. And we keep seeing this one pop up over and over and people struggle to beat it. All right, guys, here we go. Nick is live. Nick coming in with more lightning. With another kill squad, he's got seven sneaky goblins for this one. He used a lightning to take out this top compartment, taking out everything in there. Even getting some damage on the king in the process. They drop in a couple of balloons to go and get them. All right, he didn't get the arch tower down. He'll drop in one more blue to go finish off them. All right. Minion will continue to clear up that top corner here, and he funnels the left side as well, and he'll drive his king toward this multi-inferno. Now he's got the log launcher here and he can cross the base. He can decide whether he wants to put the warden on ground or air, depending on what he thinks he can get with the heroes here. He puts the warden on ground and he puts in the road champion. Now, if he does this, he has to go all the way across the base here and reach the town hall. The warden ability catches all of the heroes here, including the road champion and protects the golem and protects the log launcher. He does get access to the town hall. It will be activated on the approach. And he's looking good right now. RC, gonna grab out the seagull artillery and clear that compartment there. He's got a nice push going on. The ice golems drop out in front of the heroes and the RC still staying relatively safe there in the back. Queen staying nice and topped off. The ice golems will cross to the front. He's still got the golems alive there as well. Tanking the expo. The queen working her way towards the town hall, but she may not go to it. Come on, queen. Hang in there. Go. Go back. Go back. Go back. Yes! The queen goes to the town hall! He's got it with the ability! He'll take out the rest of the defenses along the top edge of the base there with the queen. She catches the tornado trap there, so the tornado is out of the way. The queen will drop. But here comes the Lalo. He doesn't have the warden to work with the Lalo, so he still has to be very, very careful. Keep an eye on the shot. He's going to have to freeze it multiple times here on the approach. As soon as it gets off of the Lalo, as soon as it gets off of the hounds of the pups, he has to keep it frozen continuously all the way through there. Two freezes will be enough to protect these balloons. They still do all their normal damage. They just don't have a lot of health pool here without the warden. He can, pack, he can catch all three of these together with that last freeze. And he may just swag it. I think he's got enough without it. The solo balloon hits the red bomb. And I think he's going to hold the freeze. And he's going to swag the rest here. But he might not be able to. Come on. Get the, get the wizard tower down. Yeah, he's got it. 
<laughs> he holds the freeze. He knows he's got it. That's confidence right there in your abilities. And Nick lands another one, staying perfect in this war. He'll freeze up the CC. <laughs> I think he has the most creative attack here so far. And he's got the star advantage. Let's go. Easy day, Nick. Easy day. Bernal is live, coming in against Lex Toast. He's got 14 sneaky goblins for this one. Only one Lava Hound for a 17 balloon raid here. He'll freeze up the sweeper and he'll drop the blimp in. Looks like a blizzard. He's going to drop it into the CC compartment here. And he'll be able to destroy the CC. He'll be able to... He needs to stop making... Oh, 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 oh. Be careful. Be careful. Go back. Go back. Okay, they're going south. Keep on making them invisible. There we go. Get the CC down. He got most of the CC destroyed. Most of the CC groups. Looks like we got one weakened super minion still standing. And he'll get it down there as the super wizards come out of the invisibility. Brilliant value there. Out of that Sui blimp. With the super wizards inside. Blizzard is one of the most effective strategies in the game right now in general. But he still has 13 sneaky goblins. What's he going to use those for? Start to drop him in over on the left side. Right side, I mean. And just a couple of them. Maybe he sends more to the town hall. He doesn't have more invisibility, so he can't really do that much with him at the town hall. But he'll wall break the queen in, just using the unicorn so far to top her off up to that point. Avoid any black mines in that left-hand area. And make so he has a direct approach to the town hall. More sneaky goblins come in to trim out the storages and drive the queen directly towards the town hall. Rage her up and drive her in. He's got a long way to go here for this queen charge. He's going to have to go through a wall break either through the expo and then to the inferno compartments, which is looking like where he's going to come from. Other option would have been to open up the can over the king. But no, he's going to try to wall break. Look at look at this. If the RC is able to clear the right side and go get the Inferno down, he can use the next wall break. And he does to open up access all the way into the center Inferno. The King will pop his ability. Still tanking for the Royal Champion. Tons of value out of these heroes right now. Get them deep inside of the base here. The King even passes up the Queen. Might get a healer transfer to save him. But one way or another, is looking really, really good here. Warden ability on the top side early as he goes into the scatter shot, and he'll drive his way into the scatter shot and try to take it down. They're not taking a direct path to it, though. He does get the warden ability protecting the headhunters, and now the blooms are on the way back to it. They're going to take some damage, but no. I think one of the smaller troops there was tanking it. It was the warden. The warden was tanking the scatter shot, keeping the damage off of the blooms, and it's absolutely crushed here. Bernal with... Tons of sneaky goblins coming on the backside here to go clean up the rest of the base. And he's absolutely ripped that one to shreds. A blizzard, queen charge, Lalo bringing it home. Now, I still got to say that Nick has the more creative attacks. Grudal is uh, moderately creative there, but his attacks are still strong. He just has that one mistake that's costing him big right now. That's going to leave it wide open here for Nick to just beat a 78% two-star to win the war here and guarantee his... Uh, Appearance in the next round of the Soul Master series and win $100 for this stage. And if he doesn't step up here on some creativity, then Nick is also going to be walking away with that $50 bonus prize there for the creative attack. Let's go. Nick is live for the final attack of the war. Or his final attack. Burn also has one more. <laughs> Guys, look at this. He's got a clone, he's got mass super minions. And he's got a he's got four in invisibility here. Is he going for clone super minions? Yes, he is. A couple of blues come out first. He clones the super minions, makes them invisible. Screw super wizards. This is how we get it done with super minions. What do you even call this? I don't even know. I don't know, but look how much of the base he just took out there. He can reach outside of the compartment that he started in, getting additional value that Super Wizards would not be able to reach because they can go over the walls. But now he's starting with the Super Minions, and he'll charge his way through this left-hand compartment, and he can... He just needs a... Like, we see what the heroes can do in these bases. We see how much value that the heroes can get. So the Super Minions can go in here and take out a couple of these compartments, push their way all the way to this Molten Inferno. The heroes could 
likely clear a lot of the rest of the base here if he can keep them protected. But we'll see what he can do here as he continues to charge his way through. The queen is not going to get this multi inferno down. She will round that compartment. He'll need the super minions to go in there and grab it. They are taking some pretty heavy fire. They're all going to the center multi, and they will be engaging onto the enemy queen soon. He doesn't start the RC into that compartment either to go get the multi inferno, so they'll continue to chip away at him here. Need something to turn around and get it though. Reckon is unicorn. He has a lot of super minions that are just dying out now in the core. He's got a hound that was pulled out of the CC. The queen is powering through the wall right there. She'll go get that multi-inferno down. It's causing a lot of damage to her. Uh, wall break right there would have been really valuable. But she does choose a really smart wall to go after. She goes through the intersection wall, which means she can get out of there and go help out the RC. And oh, I don't know if he's going to get it. He still has a queen ability. He still has an RC ability. He's got a minute. I don't think he has enough. I don't think he has enough. But... He does have enough percentage to lock in the win. And it'll be up to Bernal, who can't win anymore, to just max out his creativity on the last attack here. And hopefully he had some he had time to plan something good for it. Because he's out of opportunities. And Nick will lock in the win here and move on to the next round of the solo master series. Let's uh, quickly look at the bracket here and we can see the next matchup here. The winner of this match takes on Lexnos. And on the bottom left there, Marinal beat Gaku. And then we'll have Itsu played in that match there. And then on the other side there, Peivu versus Diff and Yo-Yo versus Stars on the other side. Bernal! Live with his final attack. <laughs> we knew it! We knew he'd bring you something good! Let's go, Bernal! He's got... This, he's got the headhunter attack here. Now, we've seen a couple people use something similar to this in the previous rounds of the tournament, but he'll drop in Yetis to open up here to clear out the top compartment. He's got three invisibility spells. I don't know what he'll use for those invisibility. Maybe he uses them um, to protect the Royal Champion so we can do a Royal Champion charge. But he'll draw mass headhunters out of the CC. Those headhunters are nothing compared to what he's about to unleash on this base. Now... Pay attention to where the enemy heroes are. Usually when we see a mass headhunter attack like this, it usually comes against a base that has all the heroes grouped up so that you can get all the headhunters to go to one spot and then use a warning ability to protect them while they nuke out the area after they take out all the enemy heroes quickly. But he will have to reach all the heroes here before the headhunters will turn and attack defenses, which they do do a lot of damage and they have a lot of HP. They're a very powerful troop, but they have to get all the enemy heroes down before they'll do anything other than that. So we'll see what he does here as he continues to work his way through. But he's going to need the queen to go in here and take out this enemy royal champion. And he'll need the headhunters to charge the enemy king and then quickly turn on the scattershot and this inferno over on the left side. He'll drop in an invisibility to do something. <laughs> what? Why is he making that invisible down there? I'm so confused. Well, was he trying to drive the queen in? He's trying to drive the queen north on the base there. Okay. Now we're sending the road champion. <laughs> what? Is, what just happened? What? He lost a lot of healers though. He lost a lot of healers, and the queen is in danger. Oh no. I. I am so confused at what just happened. He'll rage up his road champion, make her invisible. She doesn't have enough invisibility to take the town hall if that's what she was supposed to do. But he'll freeze the town hall and try to get her through it. Taking a lot of damage right there. All he has left is the warden and headhunters. He can't get this town hall down, can he? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well. I suppose he lost either way. They'll drop in the mass headhunters. They'll go get the enemy king down. And then hopefully the golem and the warden can take out the town hall. There are a couple of balloons going at it though. He had a couple of balloons. The warden ability protects the balloons. Get to strike, get to strike. One more, one more. Oh, the battle builders save the town hall. And he'll end it at 69%. Wait, 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 wait. A 69% one star. Is a four star! Nick wins! No, he doesn't. 
<laughs> Alright, congratulations to Nick. He will move on to the next round of the Solo Master series. Lots of fun attacks in this one. Brilliant stuff here. If you guys enjoyed that, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel for more. Don't forget to use code Eric. And thanks again to uh, CarbonFin for setting up the Solo Master series. Go check back there. Put a link for him in the video description. You're probably already subbed to him. I don't know how you couldn't be. But that's where we wrap it up, guys. Take it easy. I'll see you in the next one.